So today is New Year's Day, 1st of January 2024, and I wish you all a very happy New Year. So although it's New Year's Day, I have Josh here, he's on holiday still, so am I, and the nursery is quiet, and we will start something interesting. So you're wondering what I have these stumps doing here. We have about 10 or 12 pots of these trees. And before you can guess what it is, if we have a close look at the bark, those of you who are knowledgeable, you see the bark flakes like this. And then you have a close look at the leaves, these titchy leaves, small leaves. This is what we call the hedging honeysuckle. And these trees are used for making hedges. But instead of making hedges, we grow them in the fields to get thick and strong. So these trees would be, I would say, maybe 10 or 15 years old, grown in the field. And then the last three years, we dug them out of the field and put them in flower pots. So I'm going to show you very briefly where they come from so that you know the context in which they are grown. So we'll take you to field. So here I am in our growing fields and I will show you where we dug them up from. So you follow me. These are all our field grown trees. So these youths have been dug up and put in pots. But this is where these fellows come from. Look at them. I was growing them in pots but they are so vigorous that the roots have gone into the ground. I can't even take it out of the ground. So these have to be dug up. But if you are leaving them to grow, this is what happens. See, these have all been cut back. They were a huge bush like that. These have been pruned back and this is how they grow. So you can imagine that they grow well as hedges. They're such vigorous trees. This is it. This is it. So you grow all that canopy and then cut it back and look at that, despite the heavy canopy, this has only made a trunk no thicker than the finger. But if you give it five or ten years, they will get thick. So you just got to be patient and let these grow big and thick. Like this one, look at the trunk of this one. This is quite lovely. So you can see the beautiful movement you can get from this. So if you leave it to their own devices, it does this, but you've got to grow it for a central trunk and then with the central trunk you will then create the branches growing from it. So usually it grows very bushy. There's no central trunk. Look at that. It's got multiple trunks but you can't do anything with that. So you've got to separate it so that you get a tree with one trunk. So let's go back to the uh, workshop area and we will show you how we tackle the next stage. So this is the first stage. Growing it in the ground then putting it in pots and then we will work on it. While I was looking around, if you look at the bark of this tree, this is exactly the same. And this is a Japanese honeysuckle. Not the hedging, hedging honeysuckle, but you see how large the leaves are. And it's got beautiful white scented flowers, and they also make beautiful flowers. So this tree will be destined for a bonsai at some point. Look at the beautiful trunk there. Look at the trunk there. Look at that. All this will be cut back and I will get a beautiful trunk. So they always make beautiful, beautiful trunks. So this is how they're grown. We just got to be patient. And then we are cutting it back to the stump. So the bonsai is going to be this size. And all this will be discarded. I will keep this for another project another day. Uh, but suffice it to say, they've got different types of leaves, bigger leaves and very highly scented flowers. So we go back to the workshop. Before I go into the workshop, I thought I'd show you another plant. So this is another example of the Japanese honeysuckle. And the original tree died. Look at the beautiful trunk on that. Look at that. Look at that dead wood. This is how they grow. And this is being grown. This used to be the parent tree. But the sucker from that, can you see how similar it is? And the sucker from that was this. So although this has died, the original bonsai, I'm going to develop the bonsai from that stump. 
So that will be destined for another bonsai. But meanwhile, I will air lay these in the summer so I get more plants because they air lay very, very easily. And we will get some more interesting bonsai. So this is the honeysuckle Lonicera family, which makes excellent bonsai. So this is another, this is the honeysuckle with the leaves. Can you see how fine the leaves are? And that is the beautiful trunk. But because I put it a pot on a pot, I can hardly get it out. So they will come out. We will, you see how thick the trunk is? It's about six inches across at the base. <laughs> so that's how we grow the trunk thick. And there's another Japanese honeysuckle here too. No, that's an English honeysuckle. There you are. This one is even more massive. Look at this one. Look at the foliage there. Look at the trunk here. You see how beautiful it is. So, no end of projects with this Sakhne Sakhne. So we will go, gradually go through all of these to show you how we can work on these. And this is another Japanese honeysuckle. And look at that beautiful trunk. Look at that beautiful trunk. Let's pull this out of the way. You're filming? Yeah. Here, look at that. Look at that trunk there. So we let it grow wild and then it'll be dug up. So we've got no end of beautiful projects here. Can you see how rampant it grows? You've got to let all this top grow just to get the trunk thick. So when we talk about thickening trunks, this is what you've got to do. Let it go rampant and wild and you'll get a thick trunk. So we're going to have several projects all about the hedging honeysuckle. And that's the leaf again. This is the Japanese honeysuckle. So we've got so many of these on the nursery, but I just pulled out three of them at random. And we will work on each of these to show you how we tackle these stumps. Bear in mind that this was a six foot high bush. We've cut it all back. And all we are doing is aiming for the trunk. Because the roots went through the pot, for the last half hour, Josh has been cutting all the roots off. So we've got the roots from the side of the pot out and hopefully we will start working on it. So that is one. And this is another one. Again, we have to get the roots out. Ugh. Mind you, the pot is not filled with soil. It's only half, not even half full. But we let the roots grow into the ground so that it gets big. So here's another one. There you are. Now you can see the full beauty of the trunk. So there you go. So when you are faced with all these multiple trunks and branches, what do we do? We've just got to bite the bullet and cut everything off so i'm going to get josh to do this for us with the silky saw we're going to cut it back to the main trunk get rid of these like sucker shoots right down to the base can cut down to there. Off. Yep. Let's look at the base again. the back
turn it around let's see what face is nice you see how broad the base is over there that's got potential and then there is potential this way too there's so many options you see there's potential with this if we use this you can make something with this that could be the leader this is live just check that it is actually alive Sometimes it can be dead. You see that is a dead branch. So it's very hard to tell whether it's a live or dead branch without the leaves on it. So that looks like a dead branch. The only disadvantage with the honeysuckle is that the wood is not long lived or not long lasting so they can rot and once you get rotten wood you get nice driftwood effects but that's the end of story you got to grow it again. So I'm just trying to find an interesting trunk now from that you see that lump is very pretty. And because this is all growing, let's make sure it is growing. Yeah, that's green, so that's growing. So all we want is this bit. See, this is also possible because it's quite interesting like that. This is also interesting like that. So there are many possibilities. So it'll just end up as a short tree. You must be wondering what soil we are growing this in. This is just pure mud, garden mud. In fact, I might even be tempted to jet all the soil off, which I will have to leave till tomorrow, and then see what trunk I have below. So as they say, the moral of the story is, when you get all these complicated branches, all you're doing is cutting it back to the stump and growing it all over again. So we could either make this the tree as a stumpy tree like that, or you could make it like this, just using this part and use that as the leader. So that is as far as I would go. And this is where you talk of bonsai being a patient game we have to exercise patience and then wait for this to start producing the branches and then we will style the tree. 
So the next step, which I won't do today, but I will show you the process. I'm going to get all the soil off. I'll get some of my other staff to clean all the soil out. So we will go further down the trunk to see what else is hiding behind the soil. Because I'm sure there's going to be a more beautiful trunk below. So that is as far as I've got with this tree. Okay, now let's switch the camera off and go to the another next tree. tree here. As I say, don't laugh, but this is just garden mud. I'm always amused when people say, you've got to grow it in Akadama, you've got to grow it in this soil and that soil. But certain trees are so vigorous that this is just ordinary garden soil. You don't have to be too sophisticated about your soil. If you know your species, that's fine. But I think if you put it in a bonsai pot, the watering could be a problem and the drainage could be a problem. But I think if you could uh, do an experiment of planting them in just garden mud, I dare say the tree would grow quite well. There's no reason why it shouldn't. What I am doing is to find the root base or the nibari. You see how beautiful it is there. Look at that beautiful root there. Look. Beautiful. So hidden away is some beautiful assets. It's like digging for gold. Hmm. You must be wondering why I'm working in the middle of January. Because I have the greenhouse facilities and I can protect the trees in there. So I know nothing will happen. If you don't have a greenhouse or protection like this, it's not advisable to do work at this time of the year. But because I have this facility, I'm able to do that. Some people invest in a greenhouse. If you have the space and you've got the resources, it is worth having a greenhouse because it extends the range of your growing season. Look at the beautiful base there. That would make a beautiful base. Now I know that a lot of these extraneous shoots here are not going to be any use at all. And in fact what I'm going to do is cut this off. Let me use this silky saw. Now because I said every tree is different, I'm going to look at the tree on its merits here. Now this tree has already got a very interesting line. You see that line there? Even this is a nice line here. Like that, that would be a nice line. Mm. So all you're looking for is the line. This is where you've got to literally be ruthless, taking the decisions and then knowing that you will get the results from doing something drastic like this. So I'm just finding the line, as you can see, just finding the line, nothing more. Now this is going inwards, so that's not going to be much use. By the way, all these thick cuttings, if you stick them in the ground, they will grow because I know that these honeysuckles are very easy to strike as cuttings. Those of you who live in the tropics will know things like bougainvillea, hibiscus. You only need to stick it in the soil, in the mud, and it will become a new plant. Not rocket science. Most village farmers know how to do that. So 
so again that is the wrong use it's spoiling the line This side is not so nice, but the other side is nicer. Mm. The other side is nicer. See that back one we don't need, and we don't need it that tall. That one is going the wrong way. And I don't think we need this either. <laughs> so that is end of story. And we'll follow the progress. I'm going to put it in a plastic training pot and the canopy will be like that. So it's going to be a twin trunk. I kept that because it's a nice thing. I could reduce it a little more. And we're going to have a nice twin trunk tree like that with this beautiful nibari here, like so. So that is the end of this one. Okay, how easy is that? Okay, we've got one more to show you. So this is project number three the third of the pots of these honeysuckles. Now mind you on our nursery, you've got about 20 or 30 of these. And they're not expensive to buy because they grow so rampant, so fast. Uh, they can be made into bonsai very easily. But we produce these uh, in vast quantities. See, all these suckers will grow they go into new plants. Now this is rather complicated, but as I said, every case is different. See, even that little one, if you look at it closely, you could make a little mommy tree or a baby tree from that. Look at the twist and bend on that. Can you see? That would make a lovely little tree with lots of roots. So that would make a small cute bonsai there. See, it's got plenty root there. So I'm going to put this up to make a nice small bonsai from that. So nothing is wasted. And because it's got small titchy leaves, it would make a very nice little mommy tree. Now, what I'm doing here, because it's got multiple trunks at the base, they are in fact separate trees. So instead of just cutting it off, I'm going to see how far I can tease into the roots, and then I will wrench it off and make separate trees from it. Why waste it? I hate waste, you know. So let us see how we can separate them. Look at that root base there. I will try cutting it with the lock way. If not, I'll use one of my old saws and see if we can cut through that. But the next thing to do is to throw it on the ground and then try and separate it by stamping on it. I may get Josh to do it because he's stronger than me. So this is what I'm going to do. Like so. Let me see if I'm strong enough. Hoi! Hoi! You can feel it is separating. Oh! I think I will use a bit of the saw or a secateur. just to save another plant. I think I have managed to get it. Let's see if I can do it again. Okay, once more. Ah, success. Look at that. I'm sure you have all done this sort of thing before. It's not rocket science. Separating a plant you can do anywhere as long as you get some root with it. 
it will work. One new tree. Look at the base. I don't need it that all. Beautiful base. Beautiful base from this. I could make it like a formal upright tree. And that root can make another plant. So, so many possibilities. So that would make a nice straight tree like that. What we've got here, I'm determined to separate that part as well. So let me see if I can separate that. You won't think that bonsai involves so much brute force. Nothing namby can be about this. Plus I can't even wield an axe to the middle, otherwise I would do it. Oh. This is all being filmed in real time. Nothing staged or anything. What you see is what you get. Yeah, I'll have to get Josh to do it. He's stronger than me. Stamp on it. I think if you put your foot on it, don't hurt your hand. Put your foot on one of it. Barry off. <laughs> Stamp it, Josh. Don't break your back. I'll break the tree. <laughs> Okay, now it's, it's Lopper again. Almost like going collecting, but here yeah, he's just collecting from the flower pot. This is not Yamadori, this is real life nursery work. Use the Lopper again. Use the locker again. I think it's stuck in there. There you are. So we've got three trees out of that one pot. How good is that? Three for the price of one. Okay. Someone should, oh, you get another one. Reds that one out. That's a nice one. That's another one, nice one. Four. And more. May I put your foot on it and do it? Oh, there you are. Another tree. 
So they're all nice. Each and every one is nice. So let's put it back. Oh, another one. <laughs> Five. <laughs> That's value for money. Okay, okay. Let's put it on the turntable and see what we have. That's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And is that number six? What is that one? That we just cut off. That that nothing, cut okay. The... All right, so we can see straight away. Oh, sorry. That must be what you know. So this one, look at that. Lovely, actually. This one, you see the almost like an aerial root from the top. I dare say if you plant this, you'll get another tree from it. So, endless supply of trees. Endless supply. Look at that beautiful movement. Always talking about movement. Look at that. So we don't need this. So that's going to be the tree, we can cut that off. So we've got a tree there, nice and formal upright with that beautiful shape already. I will pot these up tomorrow when I have more time, but I'm just showing you the principle of what we're doing here. And may I remind you again, look at that beautiful bark that the hedging honeysuckle has got. Beautiful bark. Not juniper. Yeah. And they shed their bark as the trunk thickens. So this one, we got to look at each one on its merits. You see, there's a nice line there if you wanted to have a more stumpy tree. Or you could have a taller tree. You could use that as a sacrificial, should you so wish. bigger or let the new branches come and then decide which way to take the tree. It could produce a branch there, another branch there and you can create the triangle there. So this angle of planting, the way it came out of the pot, is almost like a natural slant to the tree. So that would make a nice tree. So again we're going to put these into training pots. So look at all these. Because they tend to sucker, the multiple or the twin trunks seem to be a nice solution for these trees. Again, that one is a bit too tall. And you notice that they have these beautiful thick roots. So this one here, because it was planted deep, you can see the roots are forming up there. And the base there is also got roots. So I'm going to show you what I would do in a situation like this. I'm not going to waste anything. I'm not going to waste anything. <laughs> so that is another part. You see there's enough root there. So we're going to make this into a nice tree. So that's going to be a lovely twin trunk like that. Yeah. And then this one here, because I chopped it off there, it's got its own roots here. So this is going to be another chunky little short tree with all these masses of roots. So that's going to be another small tree. Believe you me, it's not going to be wasted. That will become another tree. So how many from that one pot I've got about seven or eight trees. This one is tall. I may grow it tall. Let's see. Nothing lost. I don't want them all to look the same. So with this one probably. Maybe grow. 
go that tall. If it's too tall, I think we may just need to, what you call, bite the bullet. Make it into a shorter tree. Why have all the trees going so tall, you know? Grow them shorter. So again, in this case, you see that root, that could make one tree and the base could make another tree. You've got to think out of the box, as they say. So that's going to be the base of another tree. From there, that would certainly become a nice another tree. So we're going to plant all these up. So you see how many trees we got out of this. And then this one, this one again, the base already looking so nice. Look at that. And you see that odd root that is growing. As I say, I don't want to waste anything at all. All these will become trees. Look at the roots on that. See, like that, I could get like a literati tree if I wanted to. See, I can plant this, I can get that shape. Or I can cut it off there and get another tree from there. But this is rather nice shape. So I'll probably cut the roots off and just let it grow. I can cut it this way. Because the roots are growing both ways, I can make the tree grow with this as the base or with this as the base. But this is better because it's thicker. So I still got like a very nice literati shape from that tree. So you see the endless possibilities we've got from this. So again, if this is, this is straight, but I think we don't have to have everything that big. So why don't we do something radical and go for a short tree? And I'm also going to do an experiment with these thick trunks that I've cut because I'm determined to strike cutting from these thick branches. Again, I know that hedging honeysuckle is so easy to root that it would root. And I've got very strong hormone rooting liquid. So I'm going to dip it in that liquid and we will do that experiment, see what comes out of it. These poor saws are getting a bit blunt because they're old. Ugh. I don't want to cut my hand. So, rather than go for all these tall trees, let's do something short. That's the new leader. And that's going to be a nice dumpy little tree. And if I wanted to make root cuttings, we cut these off and all these roots will become separate plants. So nothing going to be wasted. So these are all going to be our experiments and I'll we'll show our staff what you can do what we can save, all these roots will become new plants. There you go. So I hope you've learned something from this quick exercise. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> all proportion. Make it look really old. Yeah. So I hope you've learned something from this exercise. But as I said, we've got those other hedging honeysuckles all waiting to be done. So I hope you enjoyed this little workshop. So here is what we finally managed to do and what is very nice about this tree is the Nibari. We managed to tease the roots and it's nice from every side. So this tree will now be planted in a training pot and I bet you anything within one year it will have a full canopy of branches. So we will watch the progress of this tree. You can hear the robin singing. But the robin that used to accompany me has probably died. So let me show you the other one. So the other one still has many options. It could eventually become a twin trunk. It's rather tall, but I could cut it down by another six inches, but I will let it grow first. Again, the base is very interesting. And as I said, I'm going to do some more videos with the other hedging honeysuckles that I showed you uh, when we were walking in the field. So there are lots more projects to come about the hedging honeysuckle. 
so as they say watch this space